In this tutorial, we are going to solve a very simple question on shear stress and shear strain. So, without wasting time, please subscribe to the channel, share the video, like, and drop your comments. It is very important for you to do so. Now, this is our problem. A flexible connection consisting of rubber parts, thickness C, which is 10 millimeters, bonded to a steel plate is shown in the figure. The parts are 200 millimeters long and 150 millimeters wide. Find the average shear strain in the rubber if the force P is 150 kilo newton and the shear modulus of the rubber g which is also 800 kilopascal the b part we have to find the relative horizontal displacement between the interior plate and the outer plate a very simple question so We've already tackled shear stresses, explain how shear occurs in bodies. So to get the understanding, please you can check out for the shear stress episode and you understand the basic concept so that you apply it here. But I'll try my best to also give you a general overview as we solve the question. So straight away, we can write down some parameters from the question. So we were given some thickness T as 10 millimeters. So I can convert this to meters, right? Which is going to be 0.01 meters. We are also given a length that the length is 200 because it is 200 long millimeters. That is going to be 0.2 meters and Y, which is the width. So that is also going to be 150 mm, so 0.15 m. We are interested in finding the shear strain, which is represented this way. So shear strain, the average shear strain is unknown. We have our force P giving us 15 kilo newton. And we have the shear modulus G as 800 kilo pascal. So, what do we do? Now, from the diagram, we can see that in this direction, there's a single force P. And to balance it in this direction, there are two forces. So, each of them should have half of it so that half plus half will be equal to one in order to balance the system are we okay so we are going to consider in stress analysis that shear stress and strain analysis we can consider any of the bars we can consider the first one we can consider the second one we can consider the third one i explained this in the previous episode so considering any of them if they are sliding on the surface of each other there's going to be what a shear because this is dragging it this way these forces are also dragging it this way so there will be some sliding of surfaces causing a shear stress and we're interested in that stress and its corresponding strain so if I'm going to take the first one, let me draw a simple free body diagram of what is going to happen. So that bar is going to experience something like this. So this is what we are going to have. There's going to be some shear at the surface this way, where the rubber is. You can have some shear over there. Because of the action of this force, P on 2. Are we okay? So now the area can also be calculated as length times what the width. Do we see that? So we have it this way. In order to find shear strain, 
there is a relation between the shear strain and the shear stress from Hooke's law. So we cannot know the strain without first finding the stress. So let's find the stress. So the stress, which is tau average inside the bar, it is going to be always we know that the shear stress is also the force. Shear force we represent by V and over the area. Here we can just represent the force by the P on 2 on the area. So we know that the force P is 15 kilo newton. So half of it is going to be 7.5 kilo newton on the area. The area of the sliding surface is rectangular. So we have it given us length by width and we know the value of the length we know the value of the width so straight away we can put it in as 0 0.2 and 0. Point, we have 0 0.15 this is going to give us a shear of 250 kilopascal so the shear stress at the sliding surfaces is going to be 250 kilo pascal then we also know that shear stress is proportional to shear strain so the equation is going to be a certain constant g which is the shear modulus multiplying the shear strain so it's average so from this equation we can say that the shear strain is going to be the shear stress on the g and we can put in the value straightforward so now our strain is going to be we saw that the stress is 250 kilo newton on our g which is the shear modulus giving us 800 kilo and this is going to give us a strain of 0 0.312 so this is the shear strain inside the sliding surfaces are we okay and the b part we were to find the horizontal displacement it is very simple we have a strain are we okay we have a strain that it is undergoing so in order to find the horizontal displacement or the change in the direction or length it is going to be just the strain multiplying the thickness given so the strain is 0 0.3125 let's work in meters or millimeters so by 10 millimeters and that means we are going to have a displacement of 3.125 millimeters this is very simple thank you for watching this episode Kindly subscribe to the channel, share the video, like, and drop your comment.